I have slept in every single room in this building. I hear you slept on, the, I hear you on, slept the, on table. the table. Yes, on the table. On, on, okay. I never had to do that. <laughs> I never had to sleep on the table. That's dedication. <laughs> With an alarm clock and a blanket. first fuel crisis happened and the director came to me and said you're not to fire those kilns one single more time and I looked at him and I said how am I going to run a ceramic oven right. without right. a kiln right. he said that's your problem yeah maybe you could use your oven <laughs> in the kitchen <laughs> maybe anyway we, I, I just staggered but at that time we had already started out the business of having sales every mm -hmm. year. So we had a thousand dollars in the kitty. Mm -hmm. And when I came to my students and told them the situation, they said, well, go out and see what kilns you can find mm -hmm. with that amount of money. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. But I went mm -hmm. and I found George Halston, mm -hmm. who was going to charge me 3,000. So I came back to students and I said, well, maybe with the sale coming up, we'll have enough to pay for the kiln. And he said it would take three weeks to make, mm -hmm. so just make as much as you possibly can. I don't know where we'll store it, mm -hmm. but just mm -hmm. do your best. We proceeded. The following week, George called me. And he said, your kiln will be ready next week. I said, mm -hmm. you said three weeks? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I figured the sooner you had it, the sooner you'd be able to pay me. <laughs> so when I came to teach, I thought about how I was going to teach. And I realized there are three essential things as a putter. You have to have discipline, you have to have patience, and you have to have a philosophy. The discipline is in the technical aspect of throwing and plays and so on. The discipline is that if you don't follow the rules in throwing, you really don't get to achieve the results you want. And the philosophy is that if you don't have a philosophical attitude towards ceramics. When disaster hits you, you'll fall apart. So you've got to learn to accept what nature gives you. Well, the teacher obviously can use their experience with creativity to suggest ideas to somebody, give them a, a whole group of different ideas and they may not all be applicable, but if they have any creative energy going, they'll, something will light up in their head and they'll say, oh, maybe I could do that. And then they go off and explore an idea. And with someone who allows that creativity to expand, then they can produce something that they never expected to be able to. For me, I have to watch the person throwing and I can very quickly see how they are able to relate to the clay or not. I mean, I've had students where their hands are shaking <laughs> when they touch the clay mm -hmm. and I have to stop them and say, it's only clay, you walk on it every day. And then they look up at me with absolute shock. And sometimes you have to know and you can only do this by gauging the person as you are teaching them. You have to say to them, okay, now I've given you the basics. I'm going to leave you and let you feel the clay. And you walk away from them and, you know, let them do their thing. And sometimes it takes a little while, but if you're patient, they eventually the clay speaks to them and they begin to feel the clay because that's what it is about. It's about feeling. Right. It's what you experience through your fingers. There's a tremendous sense of ceramic family, if you want, um, which is wonderful. 
This builds wonderful friendships. It builds self-esteem, which in some cases is very, very, very necessary. I've had people sent to me by doctors who have need, needed to experience that sense of community. It opens up their mind to the possibility of what can be done because clay is a plastic medium, so you can take it wherever you want. Painting is plastic too, but on a flat surface. This is three-dimensional. It has life of its own, and that is to me fascinating. The sun, when it sets on the mountain, is incredibly beautiful with satin gold, tomato soup, copper red purple, reticulated purple, forest green. These are all the names of glazes that we use every day in our studio. And those colors are in the mountain. So the mountain speaks to me and that is beauty. And that beauty I try to put back onto a piece of clay in appreciation of the fact that I'm alive and I can do this wonderful thing with clay and glazes, which is chemistry. So you can say chemistry is beautiful.